Welcome to the fourth lecture of our um, search architecture series on um, Southeast Asian perspectives on architecture. Today we are very happy to, to um, have uh, Adi Ponomo from the um, Indonesian practice Mamo Studio as a guest, like uh, as, uh, as our number four. So we've tried to cover as many countries in Southeast Asia as possible and like Indonesia is going to be the last one for, for this term. Adi uh, studied architecture in Indonesia and Jakarta, and um, he then practiced both in Jakarta, but he has also been working for um, DP architects here in Singapore. He was kind of saying it's a while ago, but it doesn't really show yet, actually. Um, and since then, he's been like kind of uh, doing, in my mind, very, very interesting and uh, kind of thought-provoking projects like in, in Indonesia, and he's been winning like many prizes, which I'm not going to list up now. And uh, also what I find quite relevant that his work has been really been discussed like internationally, it's been exhibited in the Netherlands, he's been involved with the World Architecture Festival some, year ago, some years ago. So um, let's kind of welcome him with a short applause and let him talk actually. Is it uh, is it uh, okay? The is it loud enough? Uh, you can hear me. No. Oh, it's okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Oliver, and thank you, Kang Sua, uh, to accompany me before. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, I did small practice in Bogor near Jakarta, actually only four staff of, of us. Uh, uh, before we have a discussion, actually, uh, I'd like to split my uh, practice into two ways, which is one more practical, more projects approach, and the other is more, probably you can say research, or maybe it's only uh, observation, I think. Uh, so this one, I found is uh, more on the research-based activities that uh, we had in our office actually. Uh, it is about wood. I have interest about wood uh, from probably last five years ago because I have uh, several questions after doing uh, earlier project of mine. Uh, actually, the question is about you you can you can see it later on it's expressed on many layer actually it's on a practical uh, layer to the philosophical layer i think uh, but to start from uh, i will i will uh, i will uh, start with this first part i think uh, before i talk, i'm talking about the uh, would uh, uh, usually uh, what we found in sustainable design knowledge uh, at this moment uh, it is mostly talking about energy or uh, energy uh, consumption something like that uh, about uh, how to save the energy uh, how to save the resources, uh, but this is actually what I uh, <laughs> this is actually what I uh, uh, like to say. Uh, the human race only live mostly in that uh, light uh, area over there, so the most concentration uh, of the uh, uh, energy consumption 
actually uh, we can see on the uh, night view uh, satellite image. Uh, so uh, come closer to our region, which is uh, this part is Japan, and this one is Japanese uh, Java Island. This one, I believe, is Singapore. The Papua is uh, the dark uh, uh, area there. And if it's highlighted uh, in its geographical map, it will become like this. Uh, so in contrast between Indonesia and Japan, uh, I put it as a most contrast way. The population in Indonesia is twice uh, from Japan, but the GDP is a quarter, maybe uh, only less than quarter, I think, less, less than one-tenth, one I think. And also, uh, Indonesian people pay more uh, amount to have energy. Uh, but the most same uh, uh, issue is both of uh, Indonesia and Japan uh, only use uh, the renewable uh, sources of energy is very small, like this. So uh, we take a closer look uh, to the southeast uh, area, which is uh, we realize that Indonesia actually is the biggest part of the Southeast. And this is the fact. The consumption energy uh, at uh, 2012. Uh, most of the resources actually is non-renewable resources. So uh, it's uh, only last for several next years, I think, which is quite frightening, the, the facts. But uh, if you see, it is not distributed uh, in an equal way. So you can see more than 70% uh, energy consumption is uh, in Java, while in the rest, I think it's uh, less than 1%. In Jakarta, uh, more than 20% uh, uh, of the consumption uh, uses uh, compared to whole Indonesia. So this is uh, the statistic, uh, the usage of energy in Java Island, which is, uh, again, Jakarta is the highest uh, consumption uh, area, which is Residential is the most uh, uh, highest uh, uh, number. And to see the percentage of uh, the usage, it's more than 90% is uh, residential. So this is uh, actually the starting point uh, when I am starting to question about working together to save energy. Actually, you can see for, from this number, actually, uh, if every house is only save one uh, unit of air conditioning, it's, it's quite a lot of, uh, actually, it's quite a lot of uh, uh, efficiency we can have. It's surprising me. This is the landscape of Jakarta, actually. The brown uh, mostly is the residential, which is almost 70% coverage area is residential. So uh, to me, it's a question to everybody there, which is, uh, this is one of the example before I'm talking about wood. Uh, in this project, I'll try to I have I I, I tried to uh, uh, manage how actually the sun penetrates into uh, a house without uh, significant heating. So if you see the uh, 
slanting the sloping uh, uh, walls. It, it is for that reason, actually. If you, if you see this, uh, these numbers, these tables, uh, actually is a uh, studies of uh, the sun and the uh, duration uh, its uh, day, actually. And if you study it for the whole years, there's not much uh, inclination. So the the most uh, uh, direction you have to uh, you have to uh, consider is east and west, not uh, north or south, uh, as equal uh, area. So. It is set on a dense uh, neighborhood in the future. Uh, if you see, uh, the neighborhood will be uh, will be. It's built now uh, uh, in the right and uh, left uh, side. So the the only direction. Uh, Light can penetrate is uh, only from the top uh, part and you know, on in front uh, uh, of the facade. So, with uh, three stories programs, uh, uh, we try to understand how actually the sun will come into the volume of building. Actually, from several. Uh, uh, preliminary models, we found that uh, the best choice is uh, two-third uh, void uh, during uh, during uh, morning and one to third during the uh, afternoon. With this strategy, the heating uh, release, uh, the heat release during evening is uh, much more easier, uh, and also it's a study of uh, how to uh, how to maintain the uh, skylight by using the sunscreen. So this is the three segments of the uh, building, which is this one uh, related to morning, and the third also related to morning. Uh, light and the second segment is related to uh, afternoon uh, light so you see uh, there is a very uh, few uh, surface that is uh, uh, quite a long uh, uh, time for heating and on the skylight uh, it is a uh, we cut uh, the client cut the budget, so I have to think more uh, about how to maintain, uh, how to manage the uh, sun penetrate the, the skylight. And we found that uh, we use the planting system here, which is more effective than the uh, the previous design actually. So. From the inside, it's like a poetry of the nature outside, which is uh, when the wind blows, uh, the shadow uh, start to uh, uh, moving. And this uh, scheme, this uh, several slides ahead, uh, is done by one of my students, which is analyzing the, uh, uh, the project. Uh, he tried to uh, prove, which is my theory is uh, 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 right or uh, not in this uh, project, which is uh, every uh, hour, I think, he tried to maintain. And he start, uh, found that uh, the using of double uh, wall is uh, is uh, basically create a more stable uh, temperature. This one is the 
anatomy of the how to uh, how the energy is uh, uh, working there. So we found that uh, in efforts, uh, it reduced uh, until three until three or four Celsius degree inside. Uh, I just skip this, mm, and this one is the scheme that uh, show the morning, the during the midday, and the afternoon. But uh, after this project, uh, uh, I start questioning myself. I'm trying to save energy, which is. Uh, I found that uh, it is a quite small amount compared to uh, the initial energy to construct this building by its material, by by the way of uh, its construct. So it's to me it's a, a kind of funny things that I try to save energy by doing thing, uh, a lot of energy first <laughs> to, to save uh, small energy. So the second part is uh, uh, I try to dig uh, deeper about uh, is there any any material actually uh, which is which is probably might be suitable uh, to think again in in Indonesia in general. So uh, embodied energy of material, I think it's uh, the first uh, the first uh, issue that I uh, found, and also the fact of housing demands and the production and the facts of uh, that we have to fulfill uh, about 700,000 houses every year uh, uh, to quote the real estate Indonesia uh, a huge amount and then it spread into wood and forest management issue which is Afterward, uh, uh, relate to renewable energy uh, possibility. So I start with this image. Uh, Indonesia uh, just uh, know the s concrete. Uh, about one century, the first, the first uh, cement factory in Indonesia built by Dutch uh, in the year of uh, 1910. It was in Padang here, the first cement factory, and the uh, bigger circle represent 1,000 radius, which is, which is a, it's considered as the limit of uh, material uh, 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 is uh, is, a, is considered as a green material. So, with with this uh, distribution of cement factory, we can see the coverage uh, area, which is. Actually, can serve uh, can can do uh, uh, by uh, cement-based uh, construction. Papua will not uh, will not uh, uh, consider as uh, green uh, building there if. Uh, it built by cement-based uh, construction because uh, the the nearest is not 
in Indonesia but in Port Moresby uh, over there. So uh, this is the scale of uh, the embodied energy in general. So you can see that compared to steel, it is very, uh, uh, very much uh, uh, different. Uh, but if we zoom in the wood, uh, sorry, in the wood and the brick, uh, slightly, slightly uh, not as much as compared to the steel. And this uh, graphics uh, I found from uh, a collaboration of a researcher, Japanese and Indonesian researcher, which is uh, try to found out uh, embodied energy in common house in Bandung, a city uh, in, in, in West Java. So if you see, in this graphic uh, in simple house, medium house, luxurious house, you can see the yellow line actually is the material which have a uh, cement based uh, uh, construction. It is not too long ago that we migrate from cement based uh, construction into uh, uh, from wood uh, or bamboo construction techniques into cement based of con building construction this image uh, is a house for plant uh, plantation worker uh, during the Dutch colonialization and this one is the recent uh, houses as well. You can see the different, uh, the different uh, uh, image only by looking at these uh, walls. So this one is created for the cement bricks uh, material, which is uh, this considered to be cheaper. Uh, at this moment and uh, in most of uh, remote area uh, in the village like this uh, you can see uh, new houses uh, built like this it's it's uh, it's common now in remote area uh, somebody who uh, have uh, more money suddenly convert it into cement based uh, construction because first uh, I think because the wood is getting higher and higher in the price and also it's uh, more difficult to find it's uh, a bit contrast uh, to compare with uh, uh, our forest so this is the images that uh, the uh, previous uh, houses and compared to nowadays houses. So uh, it's drastically changed during this century. And for Papua, I think it's uh, really uh, quite a leap from this to this one. So, uh, uh, if you see the building uh, uh, life cycle needs to rejuvenate, needs to maintain uh, year by year. And I just uh, saw many traditional uh, buildings in remote area, which is last thing more than 200 years or sometimes more than 300 years without without much uh, maintenance from wood so i uh, compare if uh, there is a six by six uh, house 
that uh, that use wood and uh, brick or concrete base uh, technique. Uh, how much uh, how much is the difference between uh, wood and brick value of uh, embodied energy? So the green represent wood and uh, the red represent the uh, brick and concrete. Uh, uh, embodied energy. So you can found that its square meter actually it's a quite a different uh, value. And also for the wall, uh, it's uh, there is there is differences. Uh, you can you can see on this uh, scale bar, actually. So uh, back to what I mentioned before, the housing demand in Indonesia is uh, uh, seven thousand seven hundred thousand units per year, according to Real Estate Indonesia. And if I assume, uh, according to uh, according to this uh, research. Uh, the number of uh, embodied energy if we use wood and if we use brick and concrete based uh, construction material is uh, this uh, this uh, kind of different so it's about a uh, convoy of uh, gasoline trucks uh, for about 40 kilometers and this one is uh, for about uh, 800 kilometers, okay, for 40 kilometers and uh, 800 kilometers. So it's about 20 times, I think. Uh, it's also can be compared uh, blackout in Central Java in a whole year and blackout in West Sumatra for the whole year. Uh, and also the compared to deforestation, I think. It's quite uh, a huge uh, amount. And if we put it in contrast uh, between Japan and Indonesia, I, I put it Japan in Indonesia because uh, it's uh, I try to uh, show you the biggest difference. Uh, we see that it's decreased uh, more and more uh, year by year in Indonesia, and in Japan it's quite stable. Mm -hmm. But uh, in term of fell number uh, of the area, uh, Indonesia is uh, still much more bigger. So that's why I'm probably, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, there's not much uh, aware awareness in daily practical way to see this issue. So I'd like to compare the contrast, actually. Uh, we we uh, we see we see uh, the benefit uh, of renewable material, which is wood, uh, in Indonesia, and compared to uh, uh, concrete and brick. But in the contrast, the forest area is uh, struck uh, uh, very drastically, but the uh, but the price of the wood uh, in Indonesia is getting higher and higher and getting uh, hard to found. Uh, one of the deforestation, I think, is a uh, fire uh, in the forest. And also the carbon emission, which is, uh, which is uh, released from the, op from the opening of the and this one, I think everybody knows that to recover the forest, it needs um, 100 years. Uh, I try to start from this uh, to make uh, more uh, details in a number of the uh, uh, volume of wood we need. So I put this way. This, the production forest is only 
less than uh, 50 million hectares because uh, there is a lot of uh, numbers that different here that I, uh, I try to uh, that I found and uh, start from this uh, this one uh, I assu I assume uh, only one meter uh, diameter uh, that uh, that we utilize and this one is the uh, effective uh, uh, usage so from this uh, from this uh, part I only use 10 meter of its uh, tree so I, I assume if one hectare is uh, a plan with uh, 25 trees, which is the distance is 20 meter uh, between each tree, we have some timber in this uh, volume, and we can have biomass volume in this, and potential energy we can create from a biomass potential is this and start to reduce the trees if uh, if we see uh, only 16 trees per hectare which is it's very uh, uh, very uh, rare and also only nine trees so uh, assumption of the house is using this uh, volume so uh, start to count uh, everything there and I found that uh, actually if we manage well we can actually uh, can uh, produce the mass housing in Indonesia with wood uh, and still have a sustainable uh, forest. Actually, it's so surprising me. Uh, I'm afraid that I uh, mistaken with these uh, numbers, so I try to begin another uh, diagram to uh, uh, to understand. So from the only production forest in Indonesia, if we only use this one every year, every year, we can fulfill the whole, uh, uh, fulfill the whole uh, housing. It's, 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 it's uh, for me it's too good to be true, but uh, why, why, uh, I, I, I cannot, and also, and also, uh, this one is if I have uh, wrong with this uh, calculation, probably the maximum is here. So it's still uh, 30 years uh, sustainable uh, forest. So I just jump it uh, fast on this slide. And if you see in Europe, uh, biomass is now. Uh, uh, getting more uh, attention and I try to compare uh, the the table of uh, biomass uh, potential in Europe which is I try to uh, found the less uh, number which is more uh, wet actually so start to compare, start to uh, count the back to this map, the energy, which is if we have this uh, number, it it means that we can produce uh, this uh, uh, this number of uh, electricity energy. So it. It is uh, it is most the same with you can electricize the this part 
to me it's uh, to me uh, probably I, I'm wrong with this calculation but uh, if if uh, I put the uh, com the point is uh, mistaken it still can electri electrize this uh, uh, this area at this day so this is this is what uh, nowadays uh, technology that we uh, we can uh, we can found which is uh, bioma biomass uh, uh, resources uh, plan so i start to think about probably probably in a radical way we can imagine that the most suitable cities in indonesia probably is a forest city I, I i i don't know i don't know i don't know yet but this is the case study uh, this is not uh, in outside java but uh, it's in central java so actually it's a competition that i work of uh, actually a factory furniture factory which is uh, uh, if you see this this one is the regency the Sragen regency is here and this one is the district this, this district is there and this one is the uh, industry area which is this part so you, you can see only very small dots uh, compared to that uh, this is the uh, satellite image which is the area actually is non-productive area which is i agree to put industrial area in a non uh, non-productive uh, area for uh, ag agriculture uh, but on on this image uh, you can see uh, this factory uh, probably is one to third uh, compared to the whole uh, industrial area so if uh, this is the background the background is a traditional uh, factory uh, furniture maker actually uh, it is it is it is the culture there so we can see uh, they produce uh, furniture like this and they also plants actually the uh, thick, uh, thick, thick wood, the thick tree, uh, usually in their, in their, uh, in their uh, yard, doing in traditional way, uh, it is more sustained. It is more, uh, the number is, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, offer over over the uh what do you call it the uh the backup uh environmental the the what do you call it the uh, carrying, carrying capacity yes carrying capacity so in traditional way probably it's uh, it's it's still there but uh, if you have to do a factory, uh, I prefer. Uh, I prefer offer uh, railway uh, rather than rather than build a centralized factory. So we can create a community workshop actually. So if they want to make it faster you can use this transportation as a, as a, uh, to, to deliver the product uh, so i start from this actually the key is this uh, diagram this diagram show that it's lock actually for the final uh, furniture product we only use 30 percent the the twenty percent we can still use it as a uh, engineered wood 
but the half uh, usually is only waste. So from this uh, capacity, I tried to calculate actually the waste uh, have a possibility to create the the factory uh, as a self-sustained uh, energy uh, uh, factory. So the requirement, the brief uh, at the competition, if, if we use the renewable uh, energy like uh, wind and sun uh, and solar, but I think it's not quite uh, fit on that area because uh, first, the solar panel uh, is very expensive and the wind, I think it's not, it's not much wind there. So I tried to uh, compare wind, solar and biomass, with biomass which is uh, the less price is uh, actually biomass. So this is the uh, diagram of uh, carrying capacity actually. If the whole industrial area become uh, forest, become, uh, yeah, sorry, become forest and become uh, agriculture area and become industrial area. Of course, at these days, the economical value is the, the most is become an uh, industrial area. That's why a lot of uh, agriculture area in Indonesia is now converting to industrial area because of this reason, I think. And also for the blue one is the social uh, reason, which is the abs uh, uh, it absorbs the, the workers more rather than become a forest or become an agricultural uh, area. So uh, this one, uh, government at that time subsidized one to three billion uh, rupees in its district, in its uh, regency. So I try to compare if uh, the society manage uh, their own uh, forest uh, combined with their agriculture land uh, and also their yard, it has a possibility that they can earn more than the government subsidy here. So it is an offer actually. It is an offer to the people there to uh, uh, begin to think about their old values actually how uh, they uh, actually growing uh, the tree for productivity is uh, very important actually so this is uh, just a study uh, comparing the comparing the district income and this which is which is, uh, to me, uh, it's quite uh, frightening to see this small industrial area actually have to be back up with the sustainable forest, uh, this, this, uh, this big. So it has to be um, good management on the national scale, I think. This is, this is the issue. So back to this uh, uh, site plan, I tried to introduce uh, planting trees more, uh, even, though, even though we have a very limited area, but it's a symbolic, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, asking everybody to Thing, uh, again about this issue. So basically, uh, the factory is about, uh, I try to separate this as uh, human uh, things and the machine things. 
So the human is more, uh, more uh, planting system there. And the machine here has to back up with the energy here. So the energy is uh, basically is a lock uh, uh, collection here, lock collection and kiln dry. And the lock is, uh, the waste is, uh, is become the energy to, so, so everything that uh, creating heat and energy is put here to support all energy here. So that's uh, I, I try to skip this uh, uh, fast because uh, I don't want to talk about the detailed design of the effectiveness of the program. But uh, I only want I only like to show this project as how actually if we try to combat, uh, we try to connect uh, certain issue uh, suddenly we have a solution there like uh, say the gasification plan rather than solar or wind plan uh, and this one is uh, about the effectiveness of the uh, circulation system in inside the factory and I think also the collecting the water system but it's not uh, uh, this issue we're talking about but uh, this one you can see the uh, plants compared to the machine there. Uh, gasification and can, can dry like this. And also contrast to the machine, it's all greenery on the other side. And also collecting the rainwater. So you can see uh, this uh, the forest actually is symbolic to the workers here, which is it. Uh, it reminds them to the old value actually, which is uh, they can have a social area there uh, in the ground floor, and also the yard full of uh, thick uh, tree. And after that. After I try to uh, think a lot about uh, uh, the facts about forests in Indonesia and also the contrast between the usage of the wood and the reality, mm, uh, I try to I try to uh, seek another possibilities actually which is I call alternative wood why I call it alternative wood because uh, this is the fact uh, I only uh, Indonesia has uh, four kind uh, of biggest plantation in the world which is two of them is coconut and rubber wood coconut uh, more than one quarter of the world is in Indonesia, probably one to third, probably, as well as uh, rubber wood plantation plantation area in the world. So uh, it's quite huge area, which is uh, in Indonesia itself a quarter coconut is a quarter to the whole uh, kind of plantation, also the rubber wood. So combining. It is half of them actually the area of uh, the whole plantation in uh, Indonesia. Mm, the more interesting things I found is the ownership. The ownership of the plantation is uh, owned by a farmer, not by state uh, plantation. So I think uh, it is a chance for me to to start uh, 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 there is an entry point there probably 
by working together we can we can do something probably so uh, coconut trees uh, has to be re the life cycle that is after is unproductive is 60 years while the rubber trees only 25 years and the calculation uh, is uh, more than 1 million meter cubic per year of hardwood uh, coconut hardwood uh, is produced and more than 7 million uh, uh, meter cubic per year uh, for rubber wood processed wood so it's uh, the sum of this uh, of the two uh, kind of uh, woods uh, mostly close to the uh, number of uh, number of the housing needs this is uh, the first uh, issue about coconut so uh, I try to collect uh, possibility of coconut dates uh, and also I try to uh, learn how the communities did uh, uh, things uh, from coconuts. So uh, the case study is in Kebumen Regency. It's also in Central Java, which is uh, the people there uh, produce the fib coconut fiber tile. Uh, it's imported to some countries actually. Uh, so uh, this one is the uh, graphic I have uh, mentioned before, but uh, you can see the most dense uh, coconut trees is in this tree regency, which is uh, the the village I studied is in here in in Kabumen regency. So. I'm questioning about uh, every village or every district nowadays uh, used to build uh, community buildings only for only for uh, uh, only for get people together. Uh, but when when I found that uh, reality, every uh, every society that uh, producing the geotextile has limitation to work during the rainy season. So why don't uh, make a, a multi-purpose big buildings as a community buildings and also for the people to work uh, like this and this is this is uh, actually the calculation comparing 1000 this red uh, bar represent, represent 1000 kilometers distance well if uh, we see in the details the green uh, line actually represent the coconut trees uh, uh, as a local material. So it's very contrast between less than five kilometer compared to one thousand kilometer. And I try to limit uh, the distance uh, that I have to do with this building less than two hundred kilometers. So, some 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 uh, material like uh, probably still uh, join or probably the latex as, uh, uh, and also the hey, only only the metal roofing or the fiberglass. I think it's uh, have to uh, import from another place but it's uh, 
only 200 uh, kilometers limited. So uh, the offering is uh, like this to to do to do a building which is actually it's a multi-purpose building to every district uh, in every uh, in every district in the whole regency. So it can become a factory sometimes. It can, can become a, a place for gathering. It can be a meeting uh, place. Uh, uh, you see uh, how they work uh, outside actually. So every rainy season they usually stop uh, producing Uh, this thing so uh, it's it's only a very preliminary study but uh, we'd like to we'd like to continue it uh, slowly actually by uh, by approaching uh, some uh, parties which is uh, who is uh, interested in this uh, issue uh, this one This one actually is the first uh, project that I have a contact to uh, material of uh, rubber wood. It was an architecture installation actually, an art installation actually, to celebrate the Earth Day actually. So I'd like to introduce uh, the utilization of rubber wood to the speaker audience actually so I name it uh, waiting for the earth reincarnation something like that because, uh, because uh, this one if you see if you, the very simple technology of lamination laminating the wood because uh, rubber wood uh, we cannot we cannot found it is in a big diameter or in a Uh, quite long, uh, uh, quite long uh, uh, things, but uh, it is always uh, on a small pieces. So the technology is has to be laminated, and also it has to vacuum first uh, the the I don't know what it called, but the some liquid there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, you have to uh, vacuum uh, to uh, to make it uh, long lasting. So from the small pieces, I'd like to I'd like to show it as just small pieces and construct in a circular way because it's uh, more it's the most uh, stable. I think the circular things. So it's uh, look like a cocoon or X or something. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a uh, time to wait for the new uh, the new um, the new uh, point of. Uh, direction the the direction view towards the the issue so i think uh, i'd like to bring the audience to to get aware with this uh, alternative wood so this one is uh, inside a, a mall a shopping mall this one is the second project but it's uh, uh, unbuilt Uh, because uh, probably it's too extreme for the client. Uh, the perimeter still use brick uh, wall, uh, but it's actually a combining system between uh, because we have to to utilize the whole uh, land. Uh, so I offered the the green area is mixed with with the structure so basically uh, it is reduced the heat as well 
and also the the shape of the uh, rubber boot panel actually try to adjust the most uh, the the most heat comes the uh, it's 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 try to uh, uh, it's try to de deflect the reflect the heat uh, 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 coming uh, to the inside like this if you see from uh, the outside so the the light is still coming but uh, so uh, it's like a poetic passive cooling actually which is uh, everything is there uh, between it's it is create a new uh, it's uh, create uh, its own ecosystem there so uh, this one uh, this one is the first uh, built project uh, actually it's a uh, it's a developer that asks several architects to do uh, several units uh, of houses which is the dim is uh, green buildings so so instead of uh, 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 creating with uh, concrete brick or steel uh, I try to propose uh, the wood material the first scheme is totally totally uh, rejected because uh, I propose it as uh, with uh, coconut woods uh, after several uh, discussion it's it's a long discussion actually two years I think to convince the client to use it but uh, after when I was in Samarinda, Samarinda a town in a city in Kalimantan uh, I found a knockdown pier there, which is the material is uh, we can buy the material actually. So I propose uh, that material to the client, which is uh, this one is the uh, iron wood. We call it ulin. Uh, the iron wood is very uh, very long lasting wood. Uh, most of the uh, traditional uh, Dayak house in Kalimantan is last more than 200 years using this wood. So uh, basically it's a combination between the waste uh, material for the uh, outdoor uh, usage and on the indoor, you can see the lighter colors, the smoother surface is uh, the rubber wood. So uh, it is a kind of contrast, but I try to, uh, I try to, uh, I try to uh, communi communicate this issue uh, as a visual, uh, as a visual uh, language, like on the other side. You can see as well uh, the trees uh, here and there, and also the smooth surface inside. Uh, this is from the interior view. You still can see the contrast. The frame system still use the aluminum because, uh, uh, yes, I I cannot. Uh, I have to. I have to obey on this uh, part because I haven't got uh, a material which is uh, which is uh, which is quite uh, long lasting to to uh, substitute the aluminum frame. Uh, this one is the a detail of the surface of the rubber wood and this is during uh, the construction you can see the this column uh, this uh, this is 
uh, this pattern is coming from uh, a, a water snail actually because it's uh, used to be uh, underwater uh, at the river before and we'd like to expose as a story uh, to tell and if you see these stairs actually uh, built uh, from the logic of laminated uh, uh, construction techniques uh, so uh, actually it's a logic uh, structure which is folded like that like this and this one the last part uh, at this moment I conducted uh, another research uh, if uh, if there is a technology that uh, it can found in the future to do uh, treatment of food become more long lasting become more uh, termite proof become more fire proof probably we can use it as a as a housing projects probably housing project probably so it's a uh, if we if we did it by uh, sheer wall uh, uh, logic and I tried to found the uh, a very pre, very preliminary stage to do to do uh, how the space could be created actually so it's uh, still under uh, uh, ongoing research so I cannot tell you uh, more from uh, from this point. So I think it's uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think it was a very interesting lecture. Um, I think we have some time for um, questions. So is there any uh, questions on the student side or on the, our visitor side? Maybe I start with the question, actually. Um, so the, the scheme that you've been showing us, there were mainly um, in a rural context, you know, kind of one-story, two-story houses, actually. But I'm, I'm kind of wondering if you also see some kind of uh, probability that that kind of architect and that kind of uh, construction could um, uh, inform and change, like, kind of, uh, you know, um, high-dense construction and multi-story housing. Because I know, like in, in Norway and the UK, there are some samples where they already do like kind of high-rise constructions yes, actually yes, using yes, using yes, wood yes. as well. Uh, actually, if you do uh, observation in, let's say Kalimantan, um, most of uh, it's not too long ago. Probably it's 50 years ago uh, or 10 years ago. We until 10 years ago, we still uh, can easily found three stories uh, houses with uh, olin wood with only 10 by 10 centimeter uh, of columns. So from that, uh, I actually, I, I missed that uh, image. Actually, I have to show you uh, uh, the the common usage uh, of the woods in Kalimantan, actually. But it uh, came to me that uh, if people can do it in the past, uh, we, should, we should have uh, probably more advance in the future, actually. But I saw, suddenly I saw a contrast between <laughs> We have a lot of wood resources, uh, 
but suddenly we are losing knowledge of uh, construction of wood uh, in general and also uh, material uh, wood material knowledge uh, which is uh, which is to me uh, uh, on the on the on the project that uh, is built in Jakarta, I just realized that the workers uh, isn't familiar uh, with the wood now. So uh, I think it's a, uh, to me, to me, uh, I haven't make a, I haven't offer a solution for the future yet. But at this stage, I just like to bring again the awareness that actually we have a very huge potential uh, in our country, and there's a there's a, we have to uh, manage better, and then we have to start to study something towards the future uh, based on this actually. So to me, it's uh, very uh, compared to, let's say, Scandinavian country or Japanese, or even Canada and United States also, uh, some architects uh, try to study high-rise building by uh, wood. And uh, for me, it's a pity for us if we don't uh, start to pay attention on this issue uh, at this time. It's actually quite interesting because like um, two weeks or four weeks ago, we had uh, Vo Trong Nia from, from Vietnam here as a guest and like kind of, uh, I think he has a similar interest kind of, I mean, not working with, um, with iron wood, but you know, using bamboo, for example, as a building material. And would be actually quite interesting, like kind of how how that new perspective on sustainable architecture with kind of renewable resources actually uh, can kind of turn out to have quite a particular impact on Southeast Asian architecture, actually, right? Because I mean, we're meant to live in the middle of the of the you know, of a tropical climate where trees uh, happen to grow like very very fast. So when I joined uh, Singapore, I was really surprised just how quickly trees grow, right? And uh, I think it's kind of a very inspiring um, kind of uh, thought that you're sharing with us, actually. Are there any other questions? I hope you like the book. <laughs> I, have okay. it. I have a question. Uh, I do a lot of projects, but one of the problems facing uh, the use of wood in the tropics is that there's lots of uh, attacks by various insects and the rain and decomposition. So could you share with us a little bit more about your experience, how you, you know, help do certain things to preserve the wood, etc., etc. Actually, uh, to be frankly, it's still sort of struggling to, to ask the question because it's, it, we're still ongoing uh, uh, research with the other counterpart, but sometimes uh, you need to you need to find some uh, people which is uh, who who is uh, who is really uh, connected with you with this issue. So uh, I haven't I haven't found many, but uh, it's starting to yeah it's starting to. Uh, uh, it's starting to uh, uh, conduct uh, at this point, but uh, to start uh, to to answer the question, I I cannot I cannot say I, I cannot ask I cannot answer that this time because, uh, but uh, I think since uh, I was interested by uh, Oliver invitation because uh, it uh, it is a new 
university in this region and it is based on technology and design and I think to share this issue I think probably uh, is, is quite uh, uh, fit and quite important to me because uh, probably probably in the future probably there uh, who knows who knows it is actually uh, actually the main the major uh, actually issue in our region because uh, to see Southeast Asia is uh, full of forests thank you any other question hi so I wanted to ask a bit about the factory project, actually. So um, I think in all, it's very clear that you found a lot of very good architectural inspiration from like the limitations of wood, right? Like length or treatment or what it can bear. Um, and I wanted to ask uh, if in the factory project you could elaborate more, because it was more about using wood or plant matter as an energy source. And I wanted to ask if there, if you found any sort of architectural um, value you could say that got applied to the factory in that way. I'm, I mean, it may have been there and I, and I missed it, but I, I wanted to ask about that because there are certain projects like maybe the Bed Z project where the, the energy really had a very clear and profound impact on the architecture. I wanted to know if in your research, if you've, if you started to explore that aspect as well. Uh, actually, to be frankly, I'm a bit embarrassed here to to <laughs> to talk about this. But uh, we do conduct the research in sometimes on and off <laughs> because we have to we have to uh, uh, manage the time with uh, other projects and here. But uh, that was uh, one of the agenda, I think. Uh, I haven't shown you some of uh, some of uh, uh, actually it's still on calculation, but uh, I tried to learn from a very old days of uh, the our ancestor actually, which is uh, they can they can have. Uh, they can have their own sustainable cycle uh, within within their neighborhood in the village, which is uh, the trees is everything to them. They believe that every uh, baby is born, they have to plant uh, trees. And it's uh, it's create a, a very a very natural cycle, and it's also utilize the trees not only as a building material but also for the energy cons uh, energy consumption uh, in every day by the. Uh, it leaves its uh, branches, and some, something like that. So, actually, uh, but today <laughs> I found uh, it's quite hard to to found that link again, because because uh, I found that uh, it is it is about the speed that is uh, that is much more faster the needs compared to the resources so that's uh, actually actually the problem that uh, I see and I haven't have any idea to relate it in my architecture actually it's it's still it's still here and there it's still I try to uh, connecting the puzzles actually uh, I'm afraid I cannot, I, I, I don't uh, answer your question, but uh, actually, <laughs> actually I wish, I wish to, 
do more effort to 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 find the pieces uh, together. A last question. No? Okay, thanks very much for this uh, very interesting lecture. We're glad to have you here.